This has become my makeshift office. But it's very useful just having access to anywhere, city centre, to, to keep stuff. So. My airy warden's hat. There you go. Legit. I've got this beautiful drawing here. So presumably these were done during an air raid. There's no other explanation of, as why they would be done here. Um, and they've got a real kind of 1940s feel to them. City and council. Users of, users of ARP public charters. Um, it is not possible for recreational canteens to operate within the ARP shelter. Use, users of the shelter must make their own arrangements to bring with them hot food and drink. 1940. Pretty wacko, yeah? So, we'll um, get the ladder. See you, Margaret. My name's Duncan McKellar. I'm a multidisciplinary artist and I've been working, hard to say really, since about 1999, so about 23, 24 years. Working in full public view is, is a privilege, but it's also very disconcerting. The whole process is exposed and um, people witness your struggle they they see you tussle with the form and it's in your your mind you might be able to see it evolving but to passers by it's just this crazy mess these pieces behind me they they have a, a direct impact on people's walk into work and their commute and they benefit bristol in terms of bringing positivity I attempted to make two hands symbolizing unity with Ukraine, which wasn't particularly successful. So I, um, I've now converted the two hands into these embracing figures, which obviously has symbolism regarding solidarity and again, unity with Ukraine. Bristol's great for a place to make large, loud murals. I think I thought a lot about how murals rejuvenate areas, especially when I did these basketball court pieces, because that was, um, you could see the direct relation between taking a quite bland surface that kind of needs restoring, and then restoring that through the use of the paints and the colors and the mural artwork. Uh, there's not much relationship between money and my art, and um, not as much as I'd like there to be. But mostly I make things because I have to make them. Yeah, the relationship between money and art is um, tricky. <laughs> mostly because my dad is kind of an outsider fine artist and he's always kind of rebelled the sense of um, gaining money for the work you create or I guess a resistance to selling your artwork. I'm only now considering approaching making art with a viewpoint to making something that can be sold. Um, I think you can get into traps if you start making things which are designed to be sold because you're probably going to make something quite dull.
Oh, I've always been into art, always. From a very young child, I've always been creative. Personally, I think I'm, I, I feel very blessed that I'm in Bristol at the moment because Bristol is such a, a world pool and, and melting pot of loads of different artists, whether it's illustrative or whether it's jewelry makers or whether it's been, you know, working outside the box. And I love my work. I absolutely love my work. Textiles really is my passion and I've always wanted to actually make art rather than clothes. I don't know, I suppose it's just something that I've always had in my mind and it's only in the last couple of years that it's really found its way out into the format that I like. <laughs> now it's quite a nice balance between the clothes, I also make headdresses and then the art as well. Um, but yeah, probably only selling up for about the last year really, yeah. I've been making some really lovely bespoke pieces as well, and they've been in a few magazines. So that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to have like a white label somewhere, do you know what I mean? So I'd like them to be like on the inside, you know, when you go to a high street store and you see something like um, uh, made for, and then you have the shop. So that's what I'd like to see in the future. So it's goodbye to the sunshine, goodbye to the dew, and goodbye to the flowers, and a goodbye to you. I'm off to the subway, and it must not be late. I'm going to work in Tobin. Turbo is a, is a centre, or was a centre, like a cultural centre, meeting centre, party centre, a place where the, where the poor would hang out and get help. It was a really good time, it was really good fun, it was like wild bonfires and like, yeah, it was really good fun. It's gentrification now, you know, all, all the Londoners have moved in and um, people are forgetting about the poor, you know. Um, so yeah, blink and you miss it, didn't last long, uh, which I'm a little bit surprised about. I didn't think the council would be bothered to cover up something on the ground. They've left the paintings on the wall this time and concentrated on the ground. I, I, yeah, I miss this one, but it's, it's quite nice, that ephemeral brief intervention, and I think the, the brief nature of this piece reflects the contentious nature of its location. And it's been documented, so yeah, move on. <laughs> Hello. 
there is an element involved in being an artist in, in terms of making a mark on the world, leaving a mark on the world, leaving your mark on the world.